Building the Stuart 504 Boiler Plant, Part 26, the live steam test generating electricity. Before the live steam test though, I made a large hole in the rear part of the sub baseboard using a hole cutter in my electric drill. I didn't do it for ventilation purposes though, this is where the electrical connector is going to fit and allow me to plug in an external control box for the functions of the generator. Let the steam test commence. I'm lighting the boiler with my flexible gas lighter which keeps my hand out of the line of fire of the small explosion that occurs when you light a gas burner. These old Stuart 504 boilers are surprisingly efficient and it doesn't take long before it starts to raise steam. It's always been a bit of a puzzle to me why Stuart stopped making the 500 series of boilers because they really are very good. I've connected some silicone rubber piping to the condensate drain on the condenser and a second piece of silicone rubber pipe to drain the lower water tank. In this clip I'm filling the upper water tank. When the injectors in use the lower water tank will fill up quite quickly and I need to dispose of this water before it overflows. It's time now to fill the displacement lubricator and for this I'm using steam oil with a bit of rapeseed oil and a little bit of machine oil which I find to be really effective for lubricating small steam engines that don't use a high degree of superheat. There's nothing on the clock but the steam's coming. As you can see when I press the whistle valve it makes a bit of a whistly sort of a noise. So all I need to do now is let the pressure build. In this clip I'm testing the hand pump, although I will be using the injector for topping up the boiler, not the hand pump. I'll try the whistle again. About 20 psi now. It's time to let some steam to the engine, and of course the first steam will condense the water, and look what's happening. This is a very, very good sign. Can you see it rocking and bouncing back and forth at both ends of the stroke? That is a really good sign that the valve timing is perfect. But the engine won't turn over because there's a hydraulic lock in the cylinder, which is caused by the first steam that reaches the cylinder immediately condensing to water. So if you're playing with your own model steam engine and this happens, do not try and force the piston over top dead center. You need to clear the hydraulic lock, and that's what cylinder drain cocks are for. Watch this. Common sense warning, do not stand in front of the engine when you do this, otherwise you will get a mixture of hot water, steam, and steam oil all down your shirt. I could shut the drain cocks when the engine is running, but for the purposes of the video I'm just showing that here I am shutting the drain cocks. I'm just giving the engine cylinder a quick wipe with a cloth to get rid of any oil. And now when I open the steam valve once again, this time the engine will go all the way around. But I've just noticed that there's quite a lot of oil on the flywheel. Really I should have put drain cocks on this which allow me to pipe away the condensate. But I like a bit of mess in my life, so I'm just going to leave these as they are. By opening the steam valve a bit further I can make the engine go quite fast and I'm doing this just to warm it up because it needs to be thoroughly warm to avoid any possibility of a hydraulic lock problem. The power of this engine really is surprising. Although the cylinder bore is only one and a half inches in diameter, the amount of power at the flywheel is quite astonishing and according to the gauge on the boiler the pressure is only around 20 pounds per square inch. Right, that's enough messing with drain cocks, it's time to see whether this steam engine is powerful enough to generate any electricity. So I need to fit this belt. This is a belt that I really made in a rush because I was quite excited to see whether it worked and I didn't line it up properly, that's why it's very wobbly. I'm going to make a better version of this, which is accurately stuck together. But I'll live with this for the moment. The first thing I notice is the noise from the generator is not really excessive. It's not silent, I never thought it would be, but it's not making a horrible whining noise. I've just realised that after the last steam test, I never emptied the condenser, so the condenser will be quite full, and that's why it's making a very strange exhaust noise. So all I need to do now is open the condensate drain valve on the condenser to drain the water into a bucket on the floor that you can't see. The main problem is that the pressure is still low on the boiler, it's at about 25 psi now, and the steam is very wet. Even though it's going through a steam dryer, it's still low pressure steam, and low pressure steam is at a lower temperature. But after draining the condensate from within the condenser, the engine's exhaust note is very different. Have a listen to it now. For this first steam test, the output of the generator is directly connected to the meter. I don't have the voltage converter in the circuit. 
This excellent voltage converter that was sent to me by Jamie in Canada, not the USA like I said last time, is a great piece of kit. But for the initial test, I just need to see what the generator can do on its own. As you can see by the meter reading, with the engine running far too fast, I got about 9 volts. If I slow the engine down to a reasonable speed, I get about 6 volts. And this is what 6 volts looks like on a 12 volt, 21 watt light bulb. It's a bit dim, and do bear in mind the generator is geared up. This is about the speed I would like the engine to be running at when it generates electricity. Ideally, I'd like it to run even slower. In this clip, I'm shutting the steam valve to stop the engine, and here I'm about to apply some water and steam to the injector. And the injector picks up straight away and starts pumping water into the boiler, and this makes the water gauge a bit erratic. There isn't a blowdown valve fitted to the water gauge. I did fit one, but it leaked. I'm going to use a different idea. I'm going to use a globe valve, which will deliver the water back to the lower tank. And that way, when I get air bubbles in the water gauge, I simply snap open the valve and shut it quickly, and the sudden release of steam clears the air bubbles in the glass tube. For this demonstration, I can't do that. But I do know that the injector is pumping water into the boiler because there's no water coming out of the overflow and it's making that injector putting water into the boiler noise. So here's the bottom line. This is the engine going, in my opinion, far too fast. The meter is saying that I'm getting about 6 volts, and the little bulb is still glowing round the corner, but not glowing very much. Mind you, that is a 21 watt, 12 volt bulb. In this clip, at the moment, the engine is running at the speed I would like it to be running at to generate electricity, and it's generating about 4 volts. This is on a 10 volt scale. Maybe I could just up the speed a little bit to 5 volts. With the test meter showing 5 volts, I do think the engine is running slightly too fast, and as I wind it up even further, yes, that's too fast. By the way, if you have a look at the main drive pulley to the generator, you will notice that I fitted some different O-rings on there. They're much thinner, and they're not silicone, I think they're made out of neoprene. But they're doing the job. I may machine the pulley a little bit smaller. Alternatively, I could use a tooth belt pulley and use a tooth belt round the flywheel. Although I do think that the nice brown leather belt is more industrial revolution. Any colour leather belts cut to any thickness can be supplied by my friend Andrew at blackorchardleather.com and the web address is on screen at the moment. Steam engines are not like internal combustion engines in any way. They deliver a lot of power and torque the minute you open the steam valve. This would be a great speed to run the engine at, but I'm only getting about 2.5 volts, which is just under the threshold for the voltage converter, which is 3.3 volts minimum. What I haven't mentioned much at the moment is the boiler. Well, the boiler is just delivering the steam without event. It's set to blow off at 60 pounds per square inch, or just a little tiny bit above that. I've just noticed the sound from the exhaust, and this means the condenser's full. The engine's been running for quite a long while now. To make this video, I think I ran the engine for about two and a half hours, and now I've stopped the engine. It's time for an oiling session on all the major working parts. There's a problem that I see with the engine, and that is that the piston rod gland is blowing, and that's because when I pack the gland, I don't think I used enough graphited yarn. So once the engine's cooled down after the steam test, I will repack the gland. As you've just seen, this is a really powerful engine. When running at high speed, with my hand firmly on the flywheel, I can't stop the flywheel from rotating. I've got the camera sat on the tripod on the bench at the moment over the steam plant, just to give you a different perspective. Here I'm emptying the displacement lubricator and you can clearly see the water coming out of the bottom, followed by some oil, so it wasn't completely empty anyway. Followed by some very weird looking red oil, I don't know what that is. I'm going to refill it with my normal steam oil mixture, when I can find the oil can. The 504 boiler is blowing off now, as if it's impatiently waiting for the opening of the steam valve. Talking about opening of steam valves, this whistle valve is very leaky. I think I might change it, or maybe just reseat the ball inside the valve. 
It's a very strange thing that whenever I refit the cap to a displacement lubricator when the camera's running, it never goes well the first time. This is edited. I'd like to demonstrate the injector now. I've taken the lid off the water tank so you can see the water level. And when I first open the water valve, the water starts to drop in the tank. When I open the steam valve, the injector picks up and water is pumped into the boiler. This Jubilee fittings injector is excellent. It always picks up and it always pumps water into the boiler. As you can see, the water gauge is nearly full to the top and I haven't used the hand pump, just the injector. But here I've overdone the injecting and as you can see the gauge glass is completely full and the pressure inside the boiler is low. I fitted a Bix gas burner to this boiler and the sudden change of note of the burner tells me that the gas is now burning underneath the ceramic and cremating it. It's very common with Bix burners if they're not set up properly. But this one is set up properly because I set it up and furthermore it's been running quite happily for the last couple of hours or so. And suddenly it makes a funny noise and starts cremating the ceramic. And this is accompanied by a white residue underneath the boiler. I will look into this. I'll contact Phil at Forest Classics where I bought the Bix burner from. And I think I'll make a video about setting up Bix burners because I have found them to be problematic at times. So if you have a Bix burner and suddenly the tone of it changes for no reason, turn the gas off immediately. There's enough steam left to run the engine at a good speed even without any fire in the boiler. I've just opened the water valve on the injector. I'm not going to inject any water into the boiler. I need to drain the top water tank into the bottom water tank, which in turn is being drained into a bucket on the floor. So has it been worth building this plant? Yes, indeed. It's been very interesting to do and I think it's a great looking thing. I've opened the drain cocks on the engine and I'm just having a bit of a play with it. There's so little pressure in the boiler now, nothing showing on the gauge, but there is sufficient steam to turn the engine over even with the drain cocks open. This engine really is quite something, I'm very pleased with it. My only regret is the exhaust note. Really, I would like it to be louder, and it is louder if I put a heavy load on the flywheel. It chuffs then quite nicely. It's very important with a cast iron steam engine to make sure you clear all the water out of the cylinder before you put the steam plant away. So I've removed the oil valve from the displacement lubricator, put a piece of silicone rubber pipe on there, I've pumped some steam oil into the pipe, then I connect my compressed air line to the pipe and run the engine for a while. The compressed air blows away the water, I've left the drain cocks open and you can clearly see that first of all water comes out and then later on you probably can't see that but oil is coming out of the drain cocks. And here I'm shutting the drain cocks and giving the engine an extended run on compressed air to make sure that all of the water gets blown out of the cylinder and the steam chest. And this is the last episode of what started out as building a 504 boiler plant but went a bit further than that. Although I haven't finished with the generator yet, there will be another feature about that and making the external control panel. But for the moment, that's it. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.